Welcome back to part four. Today, we're gonna to be sanding. So all of these coats that we've put on here, we put the tape, the second coat, the third coat, all of that stuff on. Uh, today is where we make it look really pretty. So if we had any imperfections before, uh, where we had a little bit of too much mud or something like that, um, now's the time that we're gonna take care of that. So there's a few different ways that you can sand. And um, for years, I've just used a regular handle like this with a, a round head sand pole or a rounded head uh, with a pole and it works fine. Um, it gets the job done. However, uh, your shoulders and arms and everything, um, being I only do maybe one or two, maybe three projects per year, um, it, uh, you find out which muscles that you don't use quite as often. So not too long ago, uh, what I did was I was doing some looking online and they've got some of these power ones that are fairly cheap. I guess I shouldn't say cheap, they're, they're reasonable. Um, for the amount of money that you spend on them, I think they're about 150 bucks. This particular one is, the brand is called Wen. Uh, I'm not sure where it came from, if it was China or where it's from. But what happens is the head inside of here uh, is circle and it spins around in a circle real fast. You can also adjust the amount of pressure that you put on the wall. The head is slightly spring loaded so as you push on this uh, it, the inside part will float a little bit back and forth and you can kind of see right there as I pull this back and forth it has a little bit of a gap. The other nice feature is that it's got these little these little feathers on the outside and what that does is there's a little bit of a gap right where my thumb is at and that's connected to this hose and that hose goes through the handle and over to my shop vac. So going from a handle like this creates a lot of dust to this one is very minimal. Uh, there's times where I don't even have to wear a mask and I don't notice any actual residual dust. Um, and I'm not naive to the fact that there is going to be dust that comes out of it, but for the most part, it does a, an excellent job. And for 100 and, what was it, 140 or 150 bucks, um, it's been a, a worthwhile investment. So as we go through here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, after running the 12 inch box, there's just a tiny little bit of a lip that goes across here. So we're gonna try and focus on that top and bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of level this off just a little bit. Um, Cause as, it, as the 12 inch box goes through and the 10 inch, it leaves just a little bit of a, a a bump right here which works great for sanding so we can sand that out of it. The other thing is, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a, a little bit of a line here from the trowel uh, in my butt joint and so we want to take care of that and make sure it's nice and smooth. We also want to take care of the edges of our butt joints um, and then just lightly go over where the screws are. We don't want to go too much otherwise them screws they'll leave a little bit of an indent there and then everybody's going to know exactly where the screws are. I guess it works good for hanging pictures to find out where the screws are hanging, uh, where they're screwed in. I'm gonna wear my earbuds and I've got the, I'm gonna turn the shop vac on and that thing, it's a little bit loud, so these are noise canceling. And for those of you that have seen any of the other content on our channel, um, I'm gonna be listening to a podcast that Gabe Brown is talking on. Super exciting stuff.
So the last part that I've got is with standing sponges up along the top by the ceiling. Uh, Colton's already got the inside angles already done and the best way to do that is with a light. Uh, the light is going to really bring out any imperfections and we can touch up a lot of that stuff just by using the sanding sponges up along the top. And to show you what I'm talking about, when I put the light up here, you're able to see a lot of these imperfections and inconsistencies uh, from the trowel. And that trowel either hits bumps up here or edges or something like that, so we got to sand them out. And if we take the light away, they're not nearly as obvious. So the light really helps pick out the, the imperfections so we can get it uh, looking as nice as possible. This part is also a job where we need to have a dust mask. Um, this is not a perfect dust mask, it's an N95, um, but it works pretty well, especially when you're working sanding overhead with, uh, with the sanding sponges. A lot of dust is coming down, it's coming back at you, it, uh, it gets all over arms and shoulders and stuff like that. So this is a time where um, I need to use a dust mask. So what we had before with all them ripples, they easily disappeared. We just go over it a couple of times with the sanding sponges. We don't want to do too much where we take a bunch off and then it goes back in. We want to leave it out nice and straight with the, with the sheetrock here for when they put the trim on the, on the wall. But there's still a couple little spots, one right there and one right there um, that I got to touch up. But otherwise, for the most part, that went out, that goes pretty quick. And there you have it, a couple minutes, we go from one end to the next, and this is ready for paint. So, that's it for sanding. And that's actually it for this job. I did a couple of touch-ups that I just got to uh, touch up with sanding uh, tomorrow morning. But everything looks really good. Uh, I'm really happy with the results of it. And I hope the videos weren't too long for you. And if they were very, quite long, I hope they were informational, that you got something out of it, that you enjoyed it, whether it was for learning or entertainment purposes, or maybe both. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching the video. And I'll see you next time.